Welcome back to Sonic Generations 3DS. We're going to close up the uh, classic era of the game with Mushroom Hill Zone. I am so happy they chose this because I fucking love the Mushroom Hills. Yeah, it looks great, it plays great, and the modern mix is pretty damn good. But I think they kind of went overboard with picking just like the first stage of most of the games used in the 3DS version. So welcome back to Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Story-wise, we're about halfway through the game. Um, Brilliant. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this the wrong game? <laughs> I would say I would. I would. I bet you. I bet you. Sega just picked this because remember, like uh, like a year and a half ago, or so there was that really awesome kind of CG video of Mushroom Hill Zone. Yeah. And everyone's like, "This is a new game." And Sega was like, "No, we can do it. We can do it better." And this is the end result. Not I was so just much. about to bring that up because if you look carefully, you can see like shafts of light coming through the trees, and that was one of the most prominent graphical features of that uh, little video. I mean, I think like I mean, yeah, Tom. As, as Tom said, there are a lot of first level levels in this in this game. But I, I think Mushroom Hill, while we, you know, it, it's a, it's a lot of green. It it stands out from like Green Hill, Emerald Hill, and all that crap. Oh, yeah, well, obviously, it has the uh, seasonal gimmick. We just did this level a week ago. <laughs> But like mu mu musically, I would say probably two of my favorite, two, you know, one of my favorite classic and one of my favorite modern mixes. The classic version is so funky. Mm. The only thing, the only thing I wish is that I wish the Act Two remix was a remix of Act Two from the game itself, just because it would have made sense. But I guess it would have been too difficult to add the extra two seconds of drums at the beginning. Oh, like how they kept the checkpoint in there. 20 feet away from the signpost? Well, let, let, let's be honest, that is the most dangerous 20 seconds. If Tom didn't get that, it's a good challenge for the die, so let's just all be happy you got that. If you didn't time it right, you would have hit the signpost and flipped straight off the level. Most dangerous boss ever. If you, if you don't actually hit that signpost, the game actually explodes and takes you with it. <laughs> <laughs> Praise be to Dimps and their superior game design. Game design and the, and the ability to plant bombs in game cartridges. Hooray! <laughs> what the fuck? There weren't any trees in the background, though. What happened to them? That lumberjack calmed down already. <laughs> and so the animals had their orphanage after all. <laughs> <laughs> I love this track so much. Like, you know, this, I mean, I, I would say, like, in, in terms of the modern levels in this game, I, I would actually rank this as, as one, one of the best. But um, this, this, this just track, man, is so freaking good. Presentation-wise, I would agree there, but it's also one of the most linear, so if you hate Dimp's kind of, you know, hold right, boost to wing kind of philosophy, you'll hate this. But even with my kind of disdain for Dimp's at this point in time, I love modern Mushroom Hill, especially the music, which honestly grew on me over time. It's one of the levels I play the most on multiplayer. I kick ass on multiplayer. <clears throat> <laughs> well, there's only two people who play the multiplayer for Generations 3 ds so there you go. Now, uh, just going back to like level selection and whatnot, I love Mushroom Hill. You know, just as a level, I think it got a great adaptation here. But like I said, there's too many first stage levels in the game. I mean, you got Green Hill, you've got Mushroom Hill. Later on, we'll be seeing like Emerald Coast and whatnot. I think they should have like mixed it up a bit. And if they weren't going to put in like levels from the handheld games or the Master System games, then maybe you should have like put in like second stage levels. Maybe something like, in terms of Sonic and Knuckles, Flying Battery Zone. Because that would have looked great with a little graphical overhaul and whatnot. And also, there's a remix already out there for the theme. Just take it from the London 2012 Olympic Games. Boom, there you go. One thing is that, um, because we won't be talking about it, one thing in the credits, uh, in the credit version of, of this, the, the uh, little section of Mushroom Hill they use, it's really good because it's, it's, it's almost like June took the classic remix and just added guitars for it. And that sounds amazing. Basically, every remix of Mushroom Hill used in this game is fantastic. Mushroom Hill has the most number of remixes, if you think about it, because there's the classic in the modern, and then the version in the credits, and then there's the one you can unlock in the HD version, which is one of the... Um, we'll just call them, I don't know, generic remixes. So that's four, four different versions of the same song. Mm, I think one of the biggest missed opportunities in terms of, of, of the music is that say on the HD version you can't unlock like the 3DS tracks because that would have been awesome I would have loved to have just played Mushroom Hill Modern while fighting Egg Dragoon yeah 
It would also give like an incentive for people to pick up the 3DS version, cross promotion and all that. Yeah, because you can unlock music tracks in the 3DS version, but you can't play them in uh, different levels. Wait a minute, wait a minute, whoa, 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 how does Tails remember that? Because, as, as we know from the end of this canonly, this is just from Sonic and Knuckles. Tails ain't in Sonic and Knuckles. How oh, the fuck does he remember Marshall Moon? He never, he never went there. Well, actually, actually, there is some character data for Tails in the Sonic and Knuckles ROM. Just because it was planned doesn't mean it works there, but by that logic, Big the Cat is canonly in this game. Well, maybe there's some data for him in there. A hidden boss fight, it was taken out because it was too extreme. <laughs> well, okay, also, <laughs> Skylar, Skylar, there's also, there's also data in this game of the Werehog. Is he, is he kind of cool for this game? Well, the Werehog is in this game. See, on your profile card for multiplayer, you can pick your favorite character, and one of those characters you can select is the Werehog. So, yes, the Werehog is in this game, Gareth. No one's favorite character. <laughs> is that only selectable on April Fool's Day? <laughs> <laughs> it's only selectable at night for some reason. It's really annoying. I gotta be careful who sees me using this profile card. No, I've seen so many profile cards with, with that have either the Werehog as their favorite character or Sonic 06 as their favorite game. <sighs> Jesus. Skylar, you really have to stop hanging around retro, alright man? It's just getting worse and worse. I love this little trot he does when he runs out of boost. Gotta go at a reasonable pace. <laughs> I can't go fast! <laughs> Got a jog, da 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 Got a jog. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sonic's living a healthy lifestyle. Just in terms of present presentation, how you get there and playing them, I greatly prefer all of these to the um, heroes. Special ages, because those were oh, hell yeah. those were a chore to play. Like the first one was fine, but then it just got stupid and annoying. I think we mentioned it a couple of parts ago. Physics-wise, I always ended up on the ceiling and just like losing my momentum. <laughs> Dimps, lol. Actually, I think there was a video that demonstrated that you could beat almost all of the special stages without even touching the controller. That's how good they were. <laughs> what? No joke, you will catch up to the emerald. You actually go faster if you don't do anything. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? I swear on everything that is important to me, you can do that. So he swears on Sonic Retro. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that's important to me is Sonic Retro. SonicRetro.org <laughs> I, I always like that line, it's the last look you'll get before I'll close your eyes forever. I, I always thought that, that that was a kind of nice little line. And then nobody would complain about them ever again. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one, that's a, that's a good one. You know, of all the complaints I could make about Bond Sonic's model, the green eyes were never something that stood out to me as like a negative. But then again, green is my favorite color, so maybe I'm a bit biased in that regard. Now, in the HD version of the Metal Sonic fight, it actually takes place in Stardust Speedway. It looks a little bit like Chemical Plant, but they kind of like made some new assets to uh, give the illusion of a completely new level. Here, they just slap him in Casino Night, and it's it's a bit crap, to be honest. Well, you know why? This, no, this this is this is Sega doing a very nice wink to the fans. Because, of course, as we all know, Sonic 2 was just going to be sorry, Sonic CD originally was just going to be a um a kind of you know a kind of extended version of Sonic 2, and so because Sonic CD first appeared in that, and that, that game was originally just going to be an extended Sonic 2, they clearly just used Casino Night as a nice in-joke to the fan, and by no means were they just being extremely lazy. I like how you say, as an in-joke to the fan, the one guy who was waiting for this. I queued up for six hours for this, and I appreciate it, fuck you. In the credits, thanks to Gareth Spriggs. Thanks to Gareth Spriggs, <laughs> yay! Wait, so Gareth, you're responsible for this game then, right? Yeah. That everybody hates compared to its HD counterpart? No, everyone don't. Idiots like it. Hooray! I'm, s I'm sorry, Skylar, was there a point you were trying to make there? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, one thing I'll say is that, as, as you know, as we just saw Metal Sonic, you don't fight any of the rivals, you race them. But for my money, the races are harder than the actual fight you have in the HD version. Yeah, definitely. So yes, 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 Sky. Fuck you. Challenge in this game. There's challenge. 
I wonder, I wonder what this boss could be. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, guys. I, 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 I don't believe it. Something from Sonic 3. They, 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 they actually remembered Sonic 3 in this game. Take that, HD version. <laughs> and they nerfed this boss to shit! Oh yeah, like, the, I was big arms in its original version. It was like one of the hardest bosses I ever played in a classic Sonic game. And this is just, I'm just gonna stand still for six hours. He's already halfway done. Uh, back when, um, I don't know if it was E3 or some other game convention, they showed off this boss and you could clearly see classic Eggman in the cockpit. And then they took it, they, they gave him a silhouette. So everybody was like, oh, they're taking out classic Eggman. They're ruining this game. Ah! But um, we'll see later if that's true or not. Now, I will say a massive positive for this fight is the Cash Cash remix of the Big Arm theme. Without a doubt, one of the best, if not the best track in the Generation soundtrack is that good. It's great, but it, it, it's one of those tracks where it, it's like a three minute long track for a boss that doesn't nearly take that much time to defeat. <laughs> It's like Emerald Coast music all over again. <laughs> Seven minutes worth of music for a two minute level. Good job there. Good job there, Sonic Theme. And the sad part is, I'm just about to kill him, but when I kill him is when the song really starts to get good, because it goes into like an entirely new composition. Well, see, originally it was just, originally Cash Cash just took that, but June Snow liked it so much that he, he requested to add a, a, like a guitar part. So like in around the middle when the guitar kicks in, that's entirely June Snow. It's so good, Jesus Christ. You son of a bitch, I was going to mention that. You know what, Sky? You're too slow! <laughs> Jesus Generations. <laughs> With Old Testament Jesus and New Testament Jesus. They go around drinking wine and walking on water. Seems legit. Now, the, ga the game we're all waiting for is Squidward Generations. <laughs> <laughs> Squidward Generations. You know what, I, no, I want Drew Barrymore generations, classic and modern Drew Barrymore, <laughs> revisit nine of her films, I'd fucking, I'd, I'd play the shit out of there. The thing about that though, the thing about that though is that classic Drew Barrymore, ten year old Drew Barrymore, would be drinking and snorting coke, as modern Drew Barrymore, who's an adult, wouldn't be. That's the paradox, you see, he's a genius. Wait a second. How can Jesus be in the Old Testament? Uh, he's Jesus, he can do anything he wants. Time paradox. Uh, oh, okay. Wibbly wobbly, dimpsy wimpsy. <laughs> Is this, it, that, that's the lamest Harry Potter spell I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because he doesn't know Skyler. I know, it's great. What the hell is that? Oh, um, it's, it's... It's just a thing. Oh god, now even Sonic and Tails are onto us. Quick, hide the thing! Gareth must never know what this reference is. Oh, we've reached a point of contention. Yeah, well, in the HD version, you can unlock the, um... Homing attack for classic as a move from the shop by collecting the red rings, doing missions and whatnot. Here it's mandatory, and I guess it helps with the level design a little bit. I mean, it gives classic a bit more stability, you know, you know, making it across gaps and whatnot. Personally, I can take it or leave it, you know. Well, that's about all the time we have for the classic era of Sonic Generations. We'll see you all next time when we start the Dreamcast era. See you then.